Mother's Day. Um, this morning at uh, St. Andrew United Methodist Church, we welcome back Craig over here on keyboard. Megan's on vacation. <laughs> and we have a reminder that while we're in Friendship Hall, we, are, we will remain seated during the entire worship service, so you don't need to stand up for hymns. And then at the end of the service, we, we ask that you remain seated until the praise band finishes their song. Let's worship.
please join me in the call to worship? Today we celebrate our mothers, grandmothers, aunts, and all the women who have loved us. Thank you, God, for giving us mothers. We remember with deep gratitude all the ways they demonstrated their love for us. We take time to remember our mothers because a mother's love is most like God's love. Let us pray. Loving God, we know your love because we have mothers. We thank you for the mothers who carried us in their womb nourishing, protecting, and bringing us into the world. We thank you for the mothers who did not give birth to us, yet loved us just the same. With gratitude, we remember their words of encouragement when we have felt unsure or afraid. We thank you for their kindness when the world treated us unkindly. We thank you for their soft, comforting arms and the gentle way they kissed away our tears. We thank you that they protected us with the fierceness of a lioness protecting her cubs. We thank you for the times when they corrected us rather than letting us continue down wrong paths. Help us to live so that their investment in us might not be in vain. We honor our mothers with lives of service to you in the name of the risen Christ, for it is in his name we pray. Amen. Please remain seated for the hymn number 369, Blessed Assurance. Ushers come forward and um, for our tithes and offerings. 
of your great love for us, you have provided our needs. There is food for our tables, clothes to cover us, a roof over our heads, and someone to love us. For these gifts, we are grateful. Bless now our tithes and offerings, we ask, so that they may be used to make disciples for Jesus Christ. Amen.
<laughs> Good morning, church. Kind of snuck in behind you, didn't I? You want to preach while you're up here? Okay. Just, just checking. You can handle it. You don't know that today. Can you can you imagine me trying to stand still? <laughs> One thing about being a pastor, I have 17 wives. You know? <laughs> Let's start over. Good morning, church. <laughs> Let me uh, begin today by sharing a few things that my mother taught me. My mother taught me religion. When I spilled grape juice on the carpet, she instructed me, you better pray that stain comes out of that carpet. <laughs> My mother taught me logic. From her decisive words, because I said so. If I heard that one, I heard that 10 million times. My mother taught me foresight. She said, when you're having a bad day, someday remember, I told you there'd be days like this. My mother taught me ironing. Not ironing, ironing. That means keep laughing and I'll give you something to laugh about. <laughs> My mother taught me stamina. You sit right there until you eat all your green beans. I hated green beans as a kid. And you know what's worse? Is sitting there and then having to eat cold green beans. My mother taught me about the weather. When she said it looks like a tornado swept through your room. My mother taught me the circle of life. I brought you into this world and I can take you out of this world. My mother taught me about behavior modification. Start acting like you're somebody. My mother taught me about envy. There are millions of less fortunate children in the world who don't have a wonderful mom like you do. <laughs> but on this day, I still say thanks, Mom. And on this day, I say thanks to all you moms. Because if it wasn't for you all, us guys could never get it done. The most important thing a mother can ever do is to teach and share with her children the stories of Jesus. That's what my mom did. You know, over the years, my mom was one that if she had a thought up here, it was coming out of here. No matter where we were. My mom, at one time, when I was about 10 years old, turned into my hero. I was a patrol boy there in Bridgeport. Had my little thing over with my badge on it. Yeah. I look good. <laughs> but where I was a patrol boy, there was a huge hill road going up there, and that's where the junior high was, but I was in fourth grade. So I've got junior high 
guys coming by. But I didn't have to help them across the road. I would just hold the sign out when the little ones came. One day, one day, three ninth graders was coming there, and I never thought anything about it. When they got to me, the first one smacked me in the mouth. He was this much taller than me. So, off they went to school, and there I went with a busted lip. Got there, the principal, I was sent to the principal's office. He asked me what happened. I told him. He said, I need to call your mom. And I'm going, oh, man. Because I knew what was coming. Mom showed up and asked me what happened. Mom said, did you hit him back? No, Mom, he was this big. Second day, I went back to my place and got smacked in the mouth again. Mom said, did you hit him? Nope. That's all she did was shake her head. The third day, there I am. I get smacked in the mouth and I hear a car door. It's mom. <laughs> My mother, I kid you not, that road that, up to that school was probably three, four hundred yards long. And those three guys heard that car door and seen and saw my mother coming and ran up there. My mother ran up there. And when they got to the school, they ran in the school and mom ran in right in behind them. I tell you that story to tell you this. My mom's my hero. But my mom was also one that would say, hit them back. They'll quit. Maybe they would, but I couldn't have a chance to hit them back because I was always laying on the ground. Moms are amazing. And I thank all of you moms for all that you do. Because uh, moms never quit. Your babies may grow up, but you all don't quit. You know, there's four kids in our family. And I am the baby. Now, what I know that's probably going to happen today is my brother and sister will probably watch this service today. So I want to make sure, sure I share this with them. I am the baby of the family. And the only reason is that I'm the baby in the family is mom and dad finally got what they want and they quit. <laughs> I've said this for 30 years. And, I, and when my sister, I can see the look on her face, if she's listened to it now or will listen to it and watch this earlier, she's going to go. It's not my problem, I'm special. How many of us feel that way about Jesus? Yeah. We all ought to raise our hands. We're all special to Jesus, aren't we? Isn't it amazing that, that, you know, Satan comes and smacks us in the mouth. But you know who's there? Jesus. Jesus is there. I don't know if Jesus told my, taught my mom how to do that or she taught him. I'm not sure yet. But let me share with you a piece of scripture out of Matthew 15, starting at verse 21. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came to urge him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, 
Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The word of God for the children of God. Gracious Father, we thank you for this day and we are extra thankful for moms. What a gift you have given us. Lord, I ask that once again that you put me to the side and put the cross to the forefront. And Lord, may you be glorified this day. In Christ we pray. Amen. Pressure is on our moms today is greater than ever. It's got to be one of the toughest jobs in the world. And I'm thinking all the ladies would agree with that. But there's one statement out there. Once a mother, always a mother. No matter how old your baby is. See? No matter what advances takes place with technology, there are still no physical demands that are more difficult than being a mom. Because you know what moms back in the day they were tidy housekeepers. They raised perfect children. Moms cooked like a chef. Moms always looked beautiful. You know that? Moms could always handle whatever comes up and they would take care of that. They could take care of that with a bobby pin and while wearing a smile. You know that? You mothers, you wear a lot of different hats. Coming up with a salary cap that compensates all the occupations you take on, I can only think of one word. All you moms are priceless. And none of us can afford you. The old saying still rings true today. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. It's been said that no other force in the life of a child is as strong as the influence of a godly mother. Proverbs 22 reads, Train up a, a child in the way they should go, and when they get old, they will not depart from it. I know that to be true, because that's exactly what my mom did. Even when it wasn't the most proper thing to do, she did it. Even with four kids pleading not to go to church, we went anyway. There's a story of a little boy who forgot his lines in the Sunday Christmas school program. His mother was in the front row prompting him with his lines. She gestured and formed the words silently with her lips but it just didn't help. Her son's memory went blank. You ever been there? Finally, the mother leaned forward and whispered a clue. And she said, I am the light of the world. The little boy's face lit up with great feeling and a loud, clear voice. He said, my mom is light of the world. All of you are. All of you are. In the everyday life, the pressures are greater than they've ever been on the moms today. The mother in our text I just shared with you, she had a daughter who was demon-possessed. Cancer and sickness are hard to deal with but at least they have names. I can't imagine how it would be to deal with a child like that if they were demon-possessed no matter what age they were. But in, yet in verse 28, Jesus says, Woman, great is thy faith. 
in four words. Great is thy faith. Jesus summed up everything. If we never, never knew anything about this woman, he just told us everything about her. The Message Bible says it this way. Oh woman, your faith is something else. What you want is what you get. Right then, her daughter became well. Prayers of a mom. Dag gone. Prayers of a mother. Well, we don't know how much about this woman. Here's what the scriptures tells us. Tells us that she was a Canaanite woman who came from the country north of Palestine, a country hostile to the Jews. She had at least one child and was willing to go to great lengths for this child. But on the other hand, that's all we know how that's all we know about her, and we don't even know her name. All we know is that in these few moments that she spent with Jesus, he said to her, Great is thy faith. Well, if that doesn't explain a mom. Four words. But they were up to enshrine her as one of the greatest mothers of all time. And these four words tell us everything we need to know because they were spoken by Jesus himself. The Bible tells us that he searched for it as a gem collector searches for fine jewels. When he found it, he was filled with joy. He didn't always find it in the disciples. There wasn't one of them who heard the words, you have great faith. In fact, it's the opposite. Scripture says, and they went and woke him up saying, Lord, save us, we're perishing. And he said to them, why are you afraid, you of little faith? Then he got up, rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was dead calm. And to this nameless mother from the outside of the house of Israel, what did this woman do to deserve such praise of God? She worshipped him. She worshipped him. She believed in him. Let's look at a couple of the things that she possessed in her life that showed her faith. First is, she knew no fear. Boy, that's a mom, isn't it? According to the law, she had no right to be doing what she was doing, but she's going to do it anyway. Amen, moms? Here was a mother who in her need was prepared to cross any obstacle to turn to Jesus for help. But what drove her to be so bold it's because she was desperate. She knew what she was doing and what she was doing wasn't working and she knew that she couldn't waste any more time. Pride was not going to stand in her way. She had tried everything she knew to do it and everything she had tried failed. Now she would seek help from Jesus regardless of the cost. That's a mom. Second is, this mother possessed a mother's love. Love for her child. Love made her accept Jesus' silence, yet still appealed to him. Love made her suffer all the remarks from the disciples. But she stayed. Third is, this mother saw compassion in Jesus. She believed in his ability and willingness to help. She saw in Jesus the salvation to her daughter's condition. She saw hope like the light at the end of a tunnel. And whatever it took, she was going to make it there. That's a mom. Next, she was determined. She refused to leave until she got what she had come for. This mother refused to be put off or intimidated. She was not going to take criticism or silence as an answer. She was persistent with a capital P. She was there for one thing and nothing else mattered in her world except that daughter. <coughs> Matthew 7 reads, Ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For whoever asks receives and whoever searches finds. For anyone who knocks the door will be opened.
I remember after my dad passed, and I would stop at mom's two, three, four days a week. Every time I went to her house, front door was never locked. And I would say, Mom, you need to lock the front door. And my mother would say, I knew you were coming anyway. Now, she didn't know I was coming. She just didn't lock her door. But that was her excuse. But that was Mom. I'm not sure the author, but I shared this when I preached my own mother's funeral. The love of a mother is never exhausted. It never changes. It never tires. It endures through all in good repute. In bad repute, in the face of the world's condemnations, a mother's love still lives on. I remember when mom told me I was going to do her funeral. Mom told me the songs, the scripture, and the prayer. And I said, Mom, I'll let the preacher know. My mother looked at me and she goes, I am letting the preacher know. The biggest thing in my world and my brothers and sisters' world is this phrase from Mom. Because I said so. There is no words more powerful in this world than a mother saying, because I said so. Because, you know, I realized later on it wasn't just the words. It was, it's the look on all your faces. Because I said so. Jesus When Jesus told her it didn't seem right to take bread from the children of Israel and throw it to the dogs of the Gentiles, she didn't burst into tears. She walked away. She didn't walk away either. Instead, she gave Jesus the answer that got the response that he was looking for. She said, Sir, true, I admit that I have no claim on you, but there must be some extra grace, some grace that I don't deserve, and I'm appealing to you for that. How many of us need this grace of Jesus on a daily basis? We all need that grace of Jesus on every day. Billy Graham once said, Heaven is full of answers to prayers for which no one has even bothered to ask for. Have faith in the God of the dream and let's ask God to bring our dreams to completion. God's answer is ready. It's just waiting for our personal and persistent request. Folks, know this. There is nothing too big to ask God for. There is nothing that God is not able to do. God is not a respecter of persons. He is still looking for men and women today that he can say the same thing he said to this mother that we talked about today. And that phrase is this, great is your faith. She was willing to ask and not give up until she got the answer she wanted from Jesus. And that's what we need to do, not only as a Christian, but we need to do that as a church. We need to keep praying and praying and praying and praying and praying until God answers. There's only three answers that will come from God. One of them is not yet. The other one's no. But the last one's yes. And that's what every church, that's what this church needs to do. We need to keep praying. We need to keep praying and we keep, need to keep looking and we need to keep, continue to praise and thank God in all things in our lives. 
we need to step out in faith. It's not about if it costs anything. It's not about if it's, if it's somewhere halfway around the world or across the street. We need to be the disciples of Jesus Christ. God will take care of us. God will provide for us. God will get us where we need to go. And in all that, God will be glorified. And when we realize in that moment that God is being glorified, i got to tell you, we're on the right path. Because when we are glorifying and celebrating God, it can't help but be contagious to other people. Have you ever seen somebody that seems to always have a smile on their face? And when you see them, doesn't make you have a smile on your face? What happened, though, in the world? There's very few people smiling. And the other thing is, there's very few people smiling in church. Let me tell you one thing, if you haven't figured out by now. I think you can laugh and smile and have a great time in church. Now, when I was this big and going to church, you had to be real quiet. And, of course, you know, being that big, I learned a lesson that if, that I, got, if I got maybe a little too loud, there was an enforcer there to keep you quiet and I called her mom now what would happen is you know as a little kid your, your legs don't go down to the floor so they dangle well you know you can dangle your legs and all of a sudden you hit the top the pew in front of you and you're going ah, that's pretty cool so you do it again I can remember my mother with that left hand going to my knee and squeezing. I've had two knee surgeries today. <laughs> when I had my knee surgeries and I still need them again, they're all messed up. I told mom a long time ago, I remember when my first knee surgery, I said, Mom, you caused this. She said, well, you should have listened to me. <laughs> My mother had a thought here. It's coming out here. No matter where it is. Ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. And the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives. And everyone who searches finds finds and everyone who knocks the door will be open let me ask you this what's the problem now we know what to do knock on the door don't stop knocking on that door don't stop jump in with Jesus ask and it will be given you imagine imagine this amazing God that says that Ask and it will be given to you. Isn't it strange how we can forget to ask? I was talking to a lady a while back and she was telling me about her husband. It's been about a year. She told me that her husband praying for his dad and he's been praying for 45 years for his dad to give his life to Jesus. 45 years her husband was praying. And at the age of 92, that old man came to Jesus two days before he passed. Persistence. Persistence. Having a relationship with Christ, talking to Christ, listening for that small, still voice of God, and then reach out and go where God sends us. The other thing about my mom, every time I was going with another family or something or going somewhere, my mother, before you went out the door, mom would say this, remember who you are. I never understood that for the longest time because I'm thinking, 
well, Mom must be getting old. She don't remember me, and she wants me to remember the, so my name so she won't forget it anymore. But let me ask you this, or let me tell you this. Remember who you are. You are a child of the King. You have been born again. Jesus says, I go and prepare a place for you. Not for himself, for you. Because that's what Jesus does. That's what Jesus does. And he does them on a daily basis. Moment by moment. You know, in Jesus Christ, there's always, there's always a way. Through Jesus Christ, there is always hope. Through Jesus Christ, there is always life. And through Jesus Christ, there will always be a tomorrow. This guy prayed for 45 years for his dad to accept Christ. And he did. Today is a hard day for our, probably all of us. We have stories of our moms. We have those stories. We can remember those stories. I shared a few with my mom. My mom was a pistol. <laughs> I'm telling you. But let me tell you one thing. When my mom, on Saturday night, when Saturday night come, my mom, with all four of us kids, everything was pressed, everything was clean, every shoe was shined, and there they sat. The other thing, when we got out of the car, mom said, don't get your clothes dirty. Sorry, Mom. You see, this woman in this story had a demon-possessed daughter. And the only thing she knew to, do, knew to do was to go to Jesus. Did you hear that? The only thing she knew to do was to go to Jesus and to give it to him. And I'm asking all of you to do that today because all of us are carrying fears and burdens and today we need to give them to Jesus. As we play or sing something else, in the garden, who's going to plant the taters? Who's going to plant the tomatoes and the uh, that stuff this morning. Let me ask you very seriously here. If you've never given your life to Christ Jesus, I invite you. If you're once on fire for Christ and drifted away, you can come back and start over. Or if you're just broken down, worried, concerned, whatever it is, if you'll come to Christ today, he'll carry your burdens. He'll take care of us. And maybe like my mom, he may run up that hill and find the guy that hurt you. If you would, please stand and share our song.
Happy Mother's Day to all of you, all you moms. You know, the interesting thing is you didn't have to have a child to do that because I've known over the years many women that have raised kids in schools and in churches and they're never forgotten. But remember this. I invite you all to Christ Jesus every day of our life. And I say this with these closing words, words of my mother, because I said so. <laughs> and the church comes together and just simply says amen and amen. amen. Have a great week in Christ Jesus.
Mother's Day. Thank you, Chris.